there's evidence from human studies that people who exercise regularly and have epilepsy uh, are better able to control their seizures. And there's also evidence in the literature that people who are overweight or with type 2 diabetes are more prone to seizures. So my talk's going to address what might be going on in the brain at the cellular molecular levels to account for these uh, effects of metabolic status on seizure uh, proneness. Back in the 1990s, Anna Bruce Keller in my lab showed that if she maintained rats on an every other day food deprivation or intermittent fasting regimen, then uh, hippocampal neurons were much more resistant to canate-induced seizures. Uh, and that was this paper up here. And she also looked at learning and memory, which was severely impaired in animals fed ad libitum and exposed to canate, and much less impaired in the animals on intermittent fasting. And then in the ensuing decade and a half, we explored the mechanisms. And the bottom line is that the intermittent fa fasting enhances cellular stress resistance, resistance of neurons not only to seizures, but also to metabolic and oxidative and excitotoxic, other excitotoxic challenges. Now, recently we focused on a mitochondrial enzyme called sirtuin 3 SIRT3, which is a protein deacetylase, removes acetyl groups from lysine residues and proteins. And in one study, we found that running wheel exercise, uh, which had already been shown to be excitoprotective, we found that was not the case in third, CERT3 deficient mice. Uh, and we found in the K8 model that whereas uh, exercise was excitoprotective in wild type mice, it was not in the CERT3 knockout mice. And then one aspect of this that we found even early on in these studies in the 90s was that in order to see these excitoprotective effects of either intermittent fasting or exercise, the animals had to be adapted to the intermittent fasting or exercise for at least two to four weeks. And so we looked at CERT3 levels uh, in animals intermittent fasting for different time periods and found that it, by one week, there's not much of a difference uh, in animals on intermittent fasting compared to ad libitum diet. By, by a month, there's a robust increase in CERT3 protein levels. So then we explored what, you know, how is mitochondrial, this enzyme's confined to mitochondria, how is this enzyme in mitochondria affecting excitability and vulnerability to excitotoxicity. So um, Yang Lu in the lab performed whole cell patch clamp recording looking at inhibitory postsynaptic currents, that is GABA currents in wild type mice and certain three knockout mice that were either on ad libitum diet or had been adapted to every other day fasting for a month. And the bottom line is that the intermittent fasting enhances GABAergic tone in wild type mice, but not CERT3 knockout mice. We have not established the mechanism that links mitochondrial CERT3 to upregulation of GABAergic tone. But we did look at some behavioral correlates. We found that, uh, and we'd shown this before, intermittent fast fasting in the, in the um, elevated plus maze has an anxiolytic effect, that is it enhances the amount of time the mice spend in the open arms, whereas in CERT3 knockout mice, this anxiol anxiolytic effect of intermittent fasting is abolished. Um, and then we also found with spatial learning in a modified form of the water maze that whereas in wild type mice, intermittent fasting enhances memory retention, 
In CERT3 knockout mice, it does not. And then finally, in this lower right, um, in models of Alzheimer's disease where amyloid accumulates in the brain, uh, the mice tend to be prone to seizures. But if we put them on a, a ketone ester diet shown here, or uh, not shown here, intermittent fasting diet, the seizures are suppressed and seizure-induced death uh, is abolished. And you'll hear a lot more about this ketone ester from uh, Dominique August Agostino and others in this uh, workshop. And this is my second slide, the clinical correlates. Well, first I want to going to back up and, and say we've done a lot of work on intermittent metabolic switching, switching back and forth from using glucose to using ketones, that is depleting liver glycogen uh, and the fasting or extended exercise states and then uh, so ketogenic state and then restoring here. And there's a lot of changes that go on that we've summarized in this review article. But we think this switching back and forth is very uh, beneficial for brain health and, and general health. And we're trying to elucidate some of the mechanisms. And as far as clinical applications, there's a lot of interest, of course, in exercise, but also more recently in intermittent fasting as applied to various clinical conditions. A lot of the focus has been on obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease risk, but also more recently uh, brain disorders. And there's clinical trials now going on with intermittent fasting. And it turns out people can adapt very well to changing their eating pattern from three meals a day plus snacks to say daily time restricted feeding where you're fasting for 18 hours a day, eating during a six hour time window or maybe two days a week fasting, the other five days of eating. So many human studies documenting that pe people can adapt over a period of several weeks to a month so that they're no longer hungry. And, uh, and on clinicaltrials.gov, there's now many trials going on. I think epilepsy is a good uh, uh, disorder to focus on uh, among others. So, and then last slide is references. Uh, these slides will be included for everyone. So this is a list of references uh, that uh, for this work I talked about. Thank you.